Hey, welcome to another episode of The Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. Before we get into the segment, by the end of this video, I want you to do a few things for me. First of all, if you like the video, hit the like button. Please do. If you don't like it, hit unlike. It's okay. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Sometimes, as Jimmy Dole would say, you find yourself unsubscribed and you need to make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell right next to it so you can be notified when a new video is being dropped whoop there it is and more importantly the super chat will be on for this segment so if you want to donate uh, toward the efforts of Bob TV that's freely up to you I do have a job but any amount will help toward the growth of this channel and more important let us help you help us by introducing you to a program there's a link down below that says equal justice for all you're gonna click that video link and there's some educational tutorial about a phenomenal program in America that is really making equal justice a reality for every citizen. So this program is phenomenal. Um, the proceeds from you participating in the program will go back 10%. Will go back into um, the Bob TV YouTube channel. So anyway, my name is Robert Brown with the Rob Report. Let's get into. It. Hey, good day. Welcome to another episode of Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. How you doing today? I know you guys saying, man, why you keep changing your background? A lot of people say they like the old one because it's look like something from nighttime television and all that. I don't know, uh, but it does make me different from a lot of people having this background. It's a little bit darker too, so, and um, sometimes I need more uh, to deal with my lights that I have right here. But anyway, now I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, Bernie Sanders is up in the polls, uh, and... Um, we're going to talk about that for a little bit because it is essential to understand that uh, right now, even though the news media do not want to say it, but Bernie Sanders is a front runner. They want to continue to hold on to Joe Biden uh, or Uncle Joe or uh, Pedo Joe, whatever they call him. They want to hold on to and continue to declare Joe Biden for pre uh, as the front runner and he's not even running. He haven't announced running. That's the media trying to play game, try to play games because they don't want progressives look like they're winning. And you got uh, President Barack Obama over there in Germany talking trash about progressives, yet Germany is a progressive country. They have the things that progressives are fighting for here in the United States, like saying, uh, like healthcare, no cost health care, no cost education, uh, on all these things. Yeah, Germany has those. Flies over to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, says the same thing. Canada has those. His next stop probably would be Bisbane, Australia. They have it. He might stop over in Jerusalem. They got it. Yet yeah, America don't hear the progressives are fighting hard. People like Bernie Sanders are fighting hard for these things because they feel it should be a right as a citizen because every major country have it but the United States. Yeah, they still want to call him the second in the lead when Biden is not even running. Now, Biden is dropping in the polls, number one. And I guarantee it. I mean, Biden is like Hillary Clinton. Once they start running and once they start running their mouth, people tune out. You know how you do me. Once I start running, up, running my mouth, you tune me out. I'm just kidding. But, you, you know, that's how it is with some of these politicians. Bernie Sanders has been saying the same old, same old stuff for umpteen years. Yet yeah, he's still packing out thousands in the stadiums. Ask Joe Biden to go somewhere, he barely can pack out a um, uh, gymnasium. Beto O'Rourke, gymnasium. Kamala Harris, gymnasium. Barely can pack, up, pack those out. So how are you gonna tell a man who will pack out stadiums that he's not the front runner, and you try to tell a person who can't even pack out a high school gymnasium, he's the front runner. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right, so give me a moment. Give me a moment. All right, so we're going to take a look at this article. All right, so Bernie Sanders is the most popular 2020 candidate among Hispanic voters, new poll and finding. Now, everybody, when they... You know, 2016, Bernie was a no-name. Only political nutwings like me knew Bernie and knew his stance. 
on some issues. He will. It's one thing I can't take from it. And anybody else who try to take from it, they just okay. Because the man has been fighting for working people and people uh, um, uh, for minorities and harder than most people in Congress. He's definitely been working harder than Clyburn. He's been working harder than um, uh, Maxine Waters. Here we are. You got a financial system that always robbed the black community. You got people working in the financial sector that what they call gatekeepers stopping black people from getting loans and business loans and homeowners loans and things like that. Yet Bernie Sanders is fighting to, to deal with that mess, get rid of that. One of his policies is to deal with institutional racism in the banking sy system, in the financial sector. Yet people gonna say, well, you know, you know, Bernie is a racist, Bernie is a white supremacist. Well, you are entitled to your own opinion, but you gotta make, you gotta prove that that's a fact. And to me, your actions speak louder than your words or your ideology. It's kind of hard for you. It's kind of hard for me to believe Trump is a racist if I actively see him do things to help the black community, which he's not. Don't tell you he's not. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But if I see him actually pushing for things to lift up the black community, now don't get me wrong. He did a couple of things that I will be talking about on here, whether you like it or not, that will benefit the black people. I'm talking about Trump, the black community. A couple of things he's done. I'll talk about it, but that doesn't mean I'm on Trump's side. Because I'm, I'm not on none of these fools' side, because none of them really care about us. I'm looking for the person who will spend time in the black community, that he will, he will get up in a minute to come to the black community when the black community call him, when he hear the needs of the black community. One that will sit there and take notes instead of trying to instruct the black community on what the black community need to be doing and they never lived in the black community. That's what I'm looking for. And Bernie Sanders is on that list that he needs to come in the black community because I'm not going to be hoodwinked, bang, boozle. I was a strong Bernie Sanders supporter back in um, 2016. I named this channel after Bernie Sanders. My channel was called Bernie or Bus. Bob TV stood for Bernie or Bus TV. It just happened to be my name is Robert and I knew how to migrate it to my own channel, to my name. But it started off that way. But when he sold himself out to the Democratic Party, when he touted this political revolution, and he's supposed to be the general, Instead of fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting on, he gave himself up, cave in, went in, waved the white flag and retreated and started supporting Hillary Clinton and the Democrats. And sure, I'm a forgiving man. And I, have, I had no choice but to forgive him. But you're not going to pull me that direction again without making some consensus. There's some consensus I have. It's not your consensus, people. They're minds. You might have your own. Just like some of y'all would say, if, you don't, if, you, if you're not going to promote Medicare for all, I'm not voting for you. You know you said that, and some of you acted on that. Uh, if we can't um, fix this college education, we need student debts uh, to be wiped away. We need loan, student loan forgiveness, or we need to wipe out student de debt so we can put money back into the economy. Y'all said this, and y'all said if somebody's not going to support it, you're not going to get my vote. That is good politicking. You always put the pressure on them ahead of the vote, ahead of the ballot box, ahead of the polls to make your demand. You put that out there. You pressure them. Nobody is ever going to move towards your direction until you apply the pressure on them politically. Kamala Harris don't have reparation. Cory Booker don't have reparation. Look, to me, all these Democrats suck to, suck to me. You know, the only two brightest ones in there, it, based on their policies only. I don't care about who they are as a person. I'm just looking at a policy. Based on the policies is Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders. And Tulsi Gabbard, in my book, get a little edge over Bernie Sanders because of some things she planned on implementing. Now, me, I'm fed up with wars. I'm a former as a Navy man. Um, so, uh, Everybody have their litmus test. 
And right now, certain segment of my community saying, look, no tangibles, no vote. You ain't gonna, another seg a segment says no reparation, no vote. Then you got some, it's no tangible, no reparations, no vote. There's a little split in there. Some of them say, no, don't do nothing for the black community, no black agenda. And the reparations is not attached to it. Then you got people just all, it's all about reparation. Then you got, you know, anyway, the community is going to come together and they're going to figure that out. And it's going to be no tangibles, no vote, no 10, one, and no reparation. All that going to come together as one. That's a litmus test. No different from your Medicare for all people. No different from you, no cost education people. How did I get on that? I really don't know. But in this article, it said Bernie Sanders is the most popular 2020 candidate among Hispanic. And this is how I got on this topic. Back in 2016, Bernie Sanders was a no name, so he wasn't fair well, failing well with minorities until he, his name got out there. And as his name got out there, he picked up majority of the youth vote. And when they say youth vote, at 35 and under, 18 to 35. Well, some polls count 45 as the youth, youth vote. So he's faring well. We just saw another poll that he's he's the he's fair and heavily favored in the black community now because of the policies that he is implement that he wants to implement does help out the black community. It help all communities, but it does help out the black community. It does. I'm not gonna sit there and lie. It does. But it's not enough when it comes to certain segments in the black community. His policy is gonna miss that. There's certain certain gaps that need to be closed. Having a policy that help all people don't close that gap. The black community needs something separate and away from most of the American community because uh, certain things happen to us separate and away from the American community where we got robbed of things that was promised to us and never got it. This country got free. Let me get off this. I was going to say this country got free labor off the backs of black uh, um, American slaves, yet they never got their just reward. And I know people talking about, well, my, uh, I, it's not my fault. Dude, you come from the lineage of those people. It's a lineage thing. Okay. They didn't do it in this generation. They, they got to do it this generation. And the descendants of the slaves are demanding that it get done. And why are you worrying about it? It's not going to come out of your pocket. It's the government that's going to do it. But anyway, let me keep going. Bernie Sanders is the most popular 2020 candidate among Hispanics. Voters new poll finding. So his popularity is growing among the Hispanics. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders is leading every other presidential candidate in support for Hispanic voters. Even more than Julian Castro, a Hispanic presidential candidate who happened to be begging for votes right now, begging for donations because they want to get on that debate stage. And I'm for all of them getting on the debate stage. I'm not a totalitarian. A totalitarian only wants themselves on the stage. This government has been a totalitarian government for the longest. Only two party pretty much run this country. That's what you mean by totalitarian government. They don't let other voices get a shot on a vision for the for this country. Anyway, Sanders is leading every other presidential candidate in support for Hispanic voters who make up a significant chunk of his base. Significant. Recent polling finds sustaining this support will be critical to Sanders' shot at the Democratic nomination, as Latinx Latin voters will be the largest racial or ethnic minority group in the electorate by 2020, and will have a greater influence over the outcome of the nomination than in previous elections due to change in the primary calendar. Now, me personally, um, I don't 100% agree, agree with that. I still believe in the Democratic Party, the black vote makes the majority. The black vote will make you or break you. The Democratic, uh, the Republican Party got a high Hispanic vote and a low black vote. So right now, currently, the black vote is the major decision in the Democratic Party. So I'll disagree a little bit with this um, particular article. 
The polling, which was done by Morning Consult and shared with The Intercept, shows that Sanders supporters among Hispanic voters is at 33%. 33%. It's not 50%, 33%. Still high. Though those results are not broken down by age, which is not, which could be a determining factor in the primary vote. Sanders generally perform best among young voters, and a turnout of young Latino voters will likely benefit from him more than if older Latino voters show up for the poll. Well, that number is changing because you got people 35 to 55 that are starting to go towards Sanders' way. Former Vice President Joe Biden, who is also considered a leading candidate, and this is that flop I keep talking about, why are you considering him a, lead can a leading candidate and he's not a candidate? That just don't make no sense to me. I don't understand why people do that stupid stuff in media. It's like trying to assume that Hillary Clinton had all these delegate counts and the delegates didn't vote till June. And they already given her the delicate count way ahead of time. They tried to mess with her in 2008, and Obama chopped that delegate down because the delegates that she thought she had end up going to his side. So why are you town delegate counts before it's time for the delegates to vote? And the media doing the same thing. You're sitting up here talking about Biden, and he's not even running. Until the man declare, then you talk about him. But even then, folks, even then, with them putting him in this poll, Bernie's is about to eat him up, eat him alive. Former Vice President Joe Biden, who is also considered a leading candidate despite not having declared his run for office, is the only contender who comes close to Sanders' level of support, with 24% of Latinos uh, voting for him. So Bernie's at 33% with Latino voters. Um, and Biden's at 24%, and he's not even he's not even announced himself in the race. Now, let's take a look at this. All right, so here's the polling. Uh, among female voters, I guess it's Latino voters, Joe Biden's got 34 cents. 34 percent, 34 cent, 34 percent, Bernie got 25. Melick voters, 33 percent, Bernie Sanders 25. Hispanic voters, it drops for Biden, Bernie picks up 33, Biden 24. Black voters, Biden 36, 25. Name recognition, 97 percent to 99 percent, so Bernie has more name recognition than Joe. I don't understand that when Joe was the vice president. And so, I mean, you could look at these things and kind of figure out what's going on with morning consult. All right, just six states hold about 71% of eligible Hispanic voters, including 7.7 .7 million who live in California, 5.4 million who live in Texas, 3 million living in Florida, all which are early primary states. Hispanic people overall are on track to account for more than 13% of eligible voters, slightly more than the shared black vote, according to the report from the Pew Research Center in the 28 midterms. Now, for in 2018, the black vote count was not as high as it was in 2012 and 2008, because we had a black president, half black, half white president for office. So, of course, black people is going to go out and vote for them. Unfortunately, that's what we were going to do. So I know you people saying you, you, you voted for him because he's black. Yeah, because we finally got a black man who we thought was going to look out for black people. So, of course, he, we, they're going to vote him in. What you expect us to do? We've been voting for white men uh, for office who haven't done much for the black community forever, helping you guys vote them in, helping you get the person over the hump, and they still didn't do much for the black community. So we got a black person in, Helen from Chicago. What do you expect us to do? Now, me, I voted for Obama. I worked on the Obama campaign in 2008. You know the story. Went out there and put out the signs in the ground in Coleraine, North Carolina, Gates County, Green all those places. I'm the one who put the signs on the side of the road. About to get bit by snakes, frogs, bullfrogs, everything. You don't know what was going to come out of those woods. 
Campaign hard for that man in 2008. Knocked on doors. All in the South. But he, 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 he stuck me to a, in the heart, man, when family members I knew end up losing their home because he allowed Wall Street to take the home away from them and instead of giving them a bailout, he gave Wall Street the bailout. That's when I was done with him because that is some shady, slimy stuff. People work hard to buy a home and they pay into a mortgage and then, you know, Wall Street rip them off and do all these shady things behind the scenes. Next thing you know, they're losing their house. Obama is not putting them in jail. He put them in this cabinet. What they got to do with this? I don't know. On a tangent. <laughs> but the black vote was not out as much for Hillary Clinton because she offered nothing to the black community. She, during her campaign, pretty much kind of brown beat the black community and had Obama to side with her and said, after all that I built, you ain't going to vote for me? You don't care about me if you're not going to go out and vote for Hillary Clinton. Fool, what? I don't care about you because I don't vote for you. I vote for America. I vote for my community. Anyway, but he thought he took it personal. He actually, y'all seen the video I have up. He actually said he'll take it a personal insult if we didn't go out and vote for Hillary Clinton. Man, that woman didn't like you. She talk about you like a dog. She smiled in your face all the time, want to take your place, backstabbing you. She the one got you, that conned you into going out there killing black people in Africa. You said yourself your biggest mistake was killing Gaddafi because now that place is a uh, uh, hellhole, or I can use one of those other terms that Trump used, it's a crap hole. They're selling black slaves down there as a result of Hillary Clinton. And even though I don't agree with his, his, um, him 100% leading his country, this is one thing I know just by talking about people, talking to people here from New York, Libyans. They had health care. They had education. They had a, a, a pro housing program. They made sure people who were capable of having their own home, that they gave them one without going through all the hoops of getting loans. He paid for them to come to college here in New York City. He paid people to come to college. He paid their fine, he paid for their tuition. He paid, if they wanted to come to America, they could have went to college in Libya for free. But if they wanted to come to college in America, Gaddafi paid for them to come to college, paid for their housing. At the same time, he gave them a stipend every month. All they had to do was go back um, uh, working in the hospitals or whatever field that they went to college for. All he asked was two years working back in Libya, and he released the debt. Anybody wanted to get married? They got a, uh, they got a house. Anybody want to start on farm? He will help them get a farm. All he asks is a certain percentage of the produce go toward the community. But you let her talk you into killing that man and getting him out of office. And now you wonder why black people didn't vote for her in 2018. And when I say black people, I am not talking about American descendants of slaves now. I'm talking about blacks. I'm talking about Nigerian, Ghanaian, Ugandan. I'm talking about um yeah, you know, people from the Bahamas, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm talking about black people. She couldn't get the numbers of Barack Obama because she is not Barack Obama. So now this Pew Research and other polls are gonna try to say the black vote isn't as strong because it dipped when it came to Hillary Clinton. The black vote vote is just as strong as ever. And you're going to find that out this election if you keep playing around with the black community. The black community is fed up with keep putting y'all in office and y'all ain't doing nothing in the community. Let me get off this. Let me get back on this. <laughs> they say in 2018, about 43.5% of all Hispanic eligible voters were 18 to 35 compared to 30.6% of all eligible voters. Super Tuesday, which will fall on March 3rd, 2020, so we still got another year, will include California and Texas, two delegate rich states that also happen to have the largest Latino population in the country.
As recently as 2016, Californians had held its primary, presidential primary in June. Then on March 17, Democratic candidates will face a sizable Hispanic population in Arizona, Florida, Illinois, and Nevada, where roughly 28% of its population is Hispanic and will hold its caucus in late February, will expand and purpose early voting for four days next year. After Biden, former Texas Representative Beto O'Rourke, who speaks fluent Spanish, comes in third place at 13% among Hispanic voters. Senator Kamala Harris comes in fourth place at 8%. Elizabeth Warren at 7%. Julian Castro, a Latino, <laughs> comes at 4%. How bad is that? But look, Obama, when he started off in 2008, he was at the low numbers. But he got almost... He got pretty much 98 to 99.9% .9 of black vote in 2008. So don't sleep on Castro when it comes to that Hispanic vote. All he need to do is get his voice out there. All right, the latest economic um, economist in YouGov poll also found Sanders leading among Hispanic voters, with 56% saying that they're considering voting for him in the primary caucus in their state. 42% say they will consider voting for Biden, 35% for O'Rourke, 29% for Harris, and 23% for Warren. Democratic candidates have historically treated Latino voters as an afterthought, relying on last-minute Spanish language ads. This year, even as candidates are recognizing the importance of Latino outreach, many have resorted to using awkward Google-generated translations on Sanders' website only by landing pages and translated, uh, is translated in Spanish. The Sanders campaign has been making a concert effort to address the myth of having monolithic Bernie bros based off support, as well as addressing the legitimate question raised by the overwhelming whiteness and maleness of his campaign staff during 2016 run. On a recent press call, Sanders campaign manager Faiz Shakir said that roughly 40% of the campaign staff are people of color and women are in the majority. Though the first primaries are 10 months away and early polling isn't predictive, of the outcome, Sanders appears to be performing well based on other metrics like first quarter fundraising. His campaign raised more than $18.2 million from over 500,000 donors. Uh, since he entered the race, February Harris has raised $12 million, and unlike Sanders, is also uh, courting large donor donors. O'Rourke on Tuesday reported $9.4 million in 18 days, but hasn't yet broken down the numbers in detail. So, um, All right, so when it comes to Latino voters, he's doing well, according to these polls, okay? And uh, it's just going to grow with Bernie Sanders because of the platform, not him, per se. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of people like Bernie. A lot of people like Bernie. But in the polling, his numbers is going up. His numbers going up in the black community, contrary to most what people think. Black people are supporting him. His numbers going up with Hispanic. His numbers going up with the Asian community. His numbers are going up with people of color. Now, here's my thing concerning that. It's early, and things can derail your um, campaign. You don't want to do things to derail your own campaign. A lot of people derail themselves when it comes to politics. They do something to say something that's not popular, that chips away from their support. Case in point, Biden, with the, um, I don't even want to say allegation, because video proves that he's kind of creepy with these kids and creepy with women and creepy with some men. He's a little too touchy-feeling, too touchy-feeling. His numbers went down in the polls. Now, do is polls everything? No, polls is not, to me, polls can get skewed. You don't know who they're calling, what demographic they're calling, uh, where they're calling from. You don't know that. You can't monitor the polling. So I take polling with a grain of salt. But according to all these polls, Bernie is moving up because of his platform. His platform is an equal rights platform. I was telling a guy the other day, I said, um, 
let's forget about other colors. And even though I support reparations, I do support what, what um, Bernie's platform. And if people run on that platform that's willing to offer reparations too, they got me. I don't care about parties. I care about platforms and I care about your ability to get it done. Now, one thing I say about Bernie with our revolution, he has a platform. He's not going to do like Obama, try to reach across the aisle. His method of um, getting these policies implemented is, yeah, I'm going to try to reach across the aisle. I'm going to give you a shot to support a bill. I'm going to get you a, give you a shot to support some kind of legislation or some kind of resolution. I'm going to give you that shot. But the moment I see you vote no, I go into um, getting you out of office mode. He's been doing that, and he's not the president. President Obama had that opportunity to do the same thing. That's why I don't, for people say, well, the Senate stopped him from getting his policies implemented. No, Obama had the power to develop an organ. He should have took Organizing for America and made it a political action campaign and find people who think like him to put them in office so he can get the people that believe like him, believe in his policies, to help him push his policies. He should have did that, but he didn't do that. On this, on, on this case, Bernie Sanders did, is doing that. That's what all revolution and justice immigrants are all about. They're looking for people in the party that may get in the way because you got some people in the party that don't want to support progressive issues. So they're actively campaigning to get those people out to put people in to support those campaign issues. And at the same time, they're going to look to primary people in the uh, general. They remove those Republicans. See, that's something I got to give to him. That is smart politicking. Shout out to um, uh, Larry King. That's smart politics. Smart politics say, look, I'm going to give you a shot. I'm going to try to reach across, across the aisle. But if I reach across the aisle and you smack it, like my mama do with the last piece of chicken, then I ain't got to sit here and fuss with you. I don't even have to go through grand bargaining with you. All I have to do is find somebody that think like I can, think, that believe in my policies, and help them get you out of office. Smart politicking. So, in conclusion, um, I don't know what B Bernie Sanders is doing, the same old, same old things that he's always been doing. And um, whatever he's doing is working. I mean, the black community vote is stabilized. It's not dropping off like flies, but it's early. Can't say it won't. <laughs> Cur currently, the Hispanic numbers are going up. White men, white women, Bernie bros, whatever you want to call it, there. The way Bernie Sanders and our revolution just as Democrat, look, got to give it to them. They applied that pressure on the rest of the Democratic Party to the point that they changed the platform to the most progressive platform. Yet, the corporate Democrats or the moderate Democrats are fighting so hard not to go that route, but they can't because those policies are polling very well, and that's where polling comes in to the benefit. Every single policy in Bernie's platform is polling well with majority of Americans of all colors, all inclusive, diversity. People want to see that happen. People want to see us come up to the levels of every major country by providing health care to everybody without them worrying about going in debt, by get, helping anybody who has the grade to be able to get in a public college for free, helping anybody who, who um, need housing to either afford affordable housing or come up with new a new phase of um, building public housing in your community. But you know me. I'm going to always report the truth. It has nothing to do with my belief. I can tell you right now, <laughs> like I told you before, when it comes to me, the person that's I'm going to support is the person that's going to be spending quality time in my community and answering the needs of my community. 
And when I say answer the needs of my community, I mean my community is telling them what they need and he answered, not him telling them, how can you tell me what I need and you're not me? That don't make sense. Sure, you might have some great things that will help me out, but it may not be enough for me. There are certain things I may need that currently what you have is great, but it's not going to help me get what I need. Only I can tell you what I need. That's why I'm suggesting that every politician go spend time with your community, various communities, but come to the black community and let us tell you what we need and what we have to have. And right now, there's a strong movement that if you don't give us what we need, this time, you're out. So, uh, again, uh, Bernie, according to the news, is doing great with his campaign and uh, he's polling well in various segments. So the myth of the Bernie bro is gone now because it's not Bernie bros that are supporting his campaign now. He's blown past Joe Biden when it comes to Latinos. And right now, he's currently catching up with Joe Biden when it comes to blacks. And when I say blacks, I'm talking about blacks of all color, not American descendants of slaves, okay? Because there's so many phases of black people in this country from so many places in this world. So some of you people don't like Bernie, he each his own. Some people don't like Tulsi Gabbard, to each his own. Some people don't like Kamala Harrison. To tell you the truth, I don't like Democrats. Tell you the truth, I don't like Republicans. I just don't. It's just more, majority of them are slimy. I, I try not to say all of them because I don't know all of them. And to do that makes me a liar. But majority of them are slimy, snaky. And I'm going to deal with this HR 42 uh, because people tell me, well, some people support this. That don't mean nothing. Anyway, let me get off this. Bernie Sanders is doing well with Latino voters and he's doing decent with black voters and he's definitely doing well with uh, white voters so his campaign is holding strong and right now his policy his plans I mean right now his campaign strategy is not broke it is working and I'm quite sure he is not going to do anything to mess that up